Deontay, the bronze bomber, Wilder, WBC heavyweight champion of the world. He does an exclusive interview and explains why he decided to move on with his plans with Luis Ortiz as opposed to waiting for Anthony Joshua. What, what up, fight world? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Let's get into it. Shout out to Lance Pugmire. He has an interesting um, interview. It says Wilder explains why he's not waiting for Anthony Joshua's this year. Shout out to the Los Angeles Times. Visit their site. Link in the description. We will talk about it. Um, let's get it. As you guys see, it says Deontay Wilder explains why he's not waiting for Anthony Joshua this year. And this is him. You know, he happy. Dominic Brazil said he on the ground. I'm in the car trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. Right. Says Deontay Wilder said he decided to turn his back on a possible one on one negotiation with Anthony Joshua for heavyweight unification this year because he didn't trust the bout would materialize. WBC champ Wilder, 41 0 with one draw, and that's to Tyson Fury. 40 knockouts on Tuesday announced his intention to stage a rematch with Cuba's Luis Ortiz, who is 40, in a Showtime pay per view bout that could land at the Stable Center in the fall. Quote, I knew none of these major fights. We're going to happen this year, so why not go ahead and get Ortiz 2 in there? Wilder said in a Thursday interview with the Times from his home in Alabama. This was the perfect time to finish Luis Ortiz in better fashion and better than to wait on this major fight. I don't trust anything that Anthony Joshua and his team say and who else is fighting Luis Ortiz. There's, a, there's also been a vocal push public push for Wilder to stage a rematch with England's Tyson Fury following the dramatic December fight. But the unbeaten former three division champion is fighting Germany's Tom Schwartz June 15th, Vegas, and said he doesn't anticipate fighting Wilder until early 2020. Quote, the ones who hate this, I understand that because they want to see Wilder versus Joshua. Everyone is impatient. They want what they want, but I know I am the most exciting heavyweight in the world. And you'll still watch the Luis Ortiz fight. So no matter what, <laughs> because I bring the drama and the pain. In the first Wilder Ortiz meeting in 2018, Ortiz nearly knocked down Wilder in the seventh round before the champion recovered to score a 10th round technical knockout, Barclays Brooklyn. He says, you know, Ortiz is going to get up for his big fight. We saw he we saw it with me. Every fighter who goes against me gives it their best because they're going in there with the killer. Wilder said you only get exciting fights. And that's what I want to bring to the world. Yet the biggest fights of all remains elusive. Joshua told reporters in New York Thursday ahead of his fight with Ruiz at Madison Square Garden that he is sincere in seeking a personal meeting with Wilder to find common ground for the fight. What have they done thus far to be believed? Wilder asked of Anthony Joshua and promoter Eddie Hearns. He says, what have they done? What have they done to be believed? Like where we should believe them. I've tried to do it privately with some mutual friends. Anthony Joshua didn't want to do it without someone there with him on a FaceTime conversation. Why would you want to do that? It's me and you. Are you scared of me or something? This whole thing of... We got to sit down. They're just saying something, man, because at the end of the day, I don't have a boss. Joshua has a boss. That's Eddie Hearns in Matchroom Boxing. You know, when it's real and you know when someone's just talking. We've spoke before for four months. I've been in there with them. You don't think you know a person when they are lying or not? He says, without Matchroom Boxing, this fight would have been done a long time ago. He can say all he wants. They still have a say so on him. So why sit and talk with them? He's not on my level. Why not let Saturday's fight play out and perhaps approach Joshua in the ring after his potential victory? Wilder responded, that doesn't work. I went to one of his fights, but he didn't want me to step into the ring. He didn't want me to step into the ring. And how many fights of mine has he been to? He could have come on May 18th. 
you ain't training that hard, bro. Like eleven to one underdog, Andy Ruiz is a serial killer. Come on, if he really wanted that fight, he would have been there. Joshua did say Thursday he'll consider attending the Wilder Ortiz fight to press the issue again. I'm not chasing nobody no more. Wilder said the shoes on the other foot. I know this fight is going to happen eventually, but it's good to see them begging. Wilder, Wilder said he'll reconsider Joshua fight next year and added he's agreeable to a potential solution that would allow each fighter to earn 50% of the purse money offered in the closed bidding by Joshua's television partner, DAZN, and Wilder with either Showtime or Fox. Interestingly, Wilder said that the two men who could get the deal done are his manager, Shelly Finkel, and DAZN. John Skipper, describing Skipper as the solution to it all, not Eddie Hearn. Hearn said he believes Joshua has exposed Wilder's reluctance to fight this week, winning a major victory in the ring of public opinion. But Wilder disagrees and refuted the rumor he's committed to an additional fight after Ortiz on Showtime against Adam Kanowski. Quote, the real people recognize real. I'm a real champion who started from ground zero. I was not an Olympic sensation like Joshua, Wilder said. I'm a true boxing story from the ultimate bottom. I know I've done this right. I know I earned where I am. Nothing was given to me. And no matter what people think, when it comes to the night of the fight, I will knock Anthony Joshua out. The ones who doubted me are going to look like a fool. I can't wait for that moment to come. We've got a plan. This would come up. Right as I'm finishing. We've got a plan. We're doing our thing. When they're ready, let's make it happen. I've been trying to make this fight. When they're ready, I'll be ready. Boom. Listen. Um, I got to give credit to Deontay Wilder. He has, I don't know if he's went to charm school or what, but his speaking and his public presence and just how he paints the picture, just his overall public speaking has improved from back in the day. Like he's He's just better with his words and stuff like that. And I told you this was the case. This is all politics. This is all a cat and mouse game. And this was all started by Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn's team. They were playing games and they gave Wilder the runaround. They left him out to dry. They thought they controlled the whole board. They thought Deontay Wilder was clearly the B-side and Joshua was way up here. And no matter what they did, all roads lead to Joshua. But as soon as he got slagged off and he got fronted off for the Joshua fight last year after willing being willing to get $15 million after wasting three, four, five months of his career negotiating, you know, when they weren't serious, like uh, turned down $50 million, said they didn't want to fight in the U.S., not willing to fight in the U.S., but this Saturday they're fighting in the U.S. for less than $50 million and not 50% of a back-end pay-per-view since DAZN's not doing pay-per-view. You guys have to answer the simple questions. Why would you turn down 50% of the pay-per-view revenue and a 50-50 split? Like 50% of the purse, 50-50, and 50% of the back-end money to fight Andy Ruiz or Gerald Miller, you know, since obviously one happened as a result of Miller's failed drug test. But you were willing to fight Miller for no pay-per-view since DAZN's running around screaming pay-per-view is dead. You would rather take whatever they're paying you flat fee with no pay-per-view back in for a smaller fight because both the Gerald Miller fight, who had never fought for a title, who doesn't have a title and didn't even make it to the night of the fight because he had three banned substances, I believe, in his system, you know, but regardless to that, that is not a bigger fight. Andy Ruiz is not a bigger fight than Wilder. We all know that. And Eddie Hearns and them, they were playing games. And then Wilder, his star power is growing. Now he's in the driver's seat. This is what this is about. They left him out to dry. Wilder was on the right track already, fighting Luis Ortiz and being in an instant classic, heavyweight classic, because people seen Wilder had to bite down in that fight. He got hurt. He hurt Ortiz, and it was a war, and it was a classic fight at the Barclay. It did over a million. So he was already on the right track. Meanwhile, Joshua was starting to decline because his fight the same month, because Wilder fought at the beginning and the top of March of last year against Ortiz, instant classic. Joshua, however, fought back at home and he fought against Joseph Parker, 
first guy to go the distance, and it wasn't an instant classic. It was nothing like Wilder Ortiz or Joshua Klitschko or this classic heavyweight affair. In fact, Dillian White versus Joseph Parker was a much better fight, right? That happened after. So that hurt Joshua. Then the world got to see what happened with the negotiations. What happened with the negotiations? So Joshua's profile took a hit because people that have brain cells that paid attention to what was going on they they were watching and listening and they heard all the contradictions and the lies and stuff from team joshua backtrack and say oh 50 mil i'll take the fight tomorrow and then they offer you 50 mil and then you don't take the fight then you make up all these excuses how do we know the money's real i don't want to fight in the usa because you know i gotta i owe it to my fans in in the uk then you switch and said you don't want to fight in in the usa because of the judges and refs and it didn't work and then you fought povetkin and you were getting tagged up in the early rounds it wasn't joshua's best performance even though it punctuated with him knocking out povetkin povetkin was holding his own and then joshua sat on the shelf sat on the shelf meanwhile wilder had to figure something out they left him to dry he fought tyson fury and again did the same thing he like he keeps saying i'm the most exciting heavyweight he's in exciting fights all of his last few fights, Stavern was a one-rounder, so that was clearly exciting. He knocked him down three times and then stopped him in devastating fashion, a guy that went the distance with him. Then the Luis Ortiz fight was drama, high suspense, you know, people getting hurt, people showing heart, you know, Luis Ortiz drooling on the canvas, multiple knockdowns from Wilder to Luis Ortiz, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. Strategic, great stylistic matchup. Then... He fought Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury was outboxing him. He did cool in the first three, four rounds. Tyson Fury started to outbox him and, you know, I'm the Gypsy King. Then he gets a knockdown. Then he gets a crazy knockdown. Everyone thinks it's over. Tyson Fury somehow pops back up. Undertaker shit. Exciting. His last fight. He's going viral because he said he wants to kill this man on the screen, Dominic Brazil. And he's like, oh my gosh, I will hit him with a Mortal Kombat finish him. Fatality. ABC, ABC, you know. And he's talking all this, jogging up interest. Then he knocks him out one round. Classic. Goes viral. Everybody's talking about it. Now look at Joshua. He's on a he's on an understudy opponent that's much smaller than him. At least uh, Brazil, who fought AJ to his credit. But Brazil had improved, just like Dillian White has improved since AJ beat him. You know, at the time, Brazil hadn't really done nothing, but he was on like a 3-4 knockout streak knocked out at an Olympian, Carlos Negron, and, you know, I was at that fight. It was a classic. Wilder was in the crowd, too. He was there, too. You know, and, you know, Joshua's now, it's, he's fighting a guy that people don't have faith that's going to be competitive, and he's getting, he's getting flack for it. And this, they all started this. They all, they started this. Team, Team Joshua start, started this because they had their nose in the air, think it was sweet. Look, Wilder won sports Emmys. So, yeah, he's in the driver's seat. He's, the a side now you know and that's what they really fear that's what people are mad i mean the man him and his company that represent him won two sports emmys for the tyson fury um the tyson fury epilogue and all access and stuff like that so he's going viral he's last all of his fights are you know entertaining even the tyson fury fight fury versus klitschko was weak as fuck like i respect the performance that he, just because he beat Klitschko when no one else could, but they, they threw a career low amount of punches for heavyweights. Tyson Fury was definitely um, a better stylistic matchup for Wilder's style. So there was sustained action. And then Wilder's power put him right back in the fight when he was getting outboxed in some rounds, you know? And then Tyson Fury ran from the rematch. I do not blame Deontay Wilder one bit, not at all, because the two British fighters that he's been linked to fight, one stalled him out at the negotiation table and hoped for him to fail because if he didn't he wouldn't have fought Povetkin even the Joseph Parker fight you have to question it Parker had one belt Wilder had one belt why'd you pick Parker why'd you unify with Parker and then Eddie Hearn this is how disrespectful team Joshua is in the pompous Eddie Hearn and and Joshua then claimed before the Parker fight after it was a signed deal you know in fight weeks and stuff before the fight happened they said that Parker is a more difficult fight because he's more technical and Wilder's kind of like a brawler. So you disrespected the man in multiple ways. 
you said the Wilder fight is easier and the Parker fight's harder and nobody believed that bullshit and I told you that nobody believed it then and then you wonder why he's being his own man now that he's got his own shine it's just like he doesn't need you anymore you know now he can sit and watch you suffer just like you try to make him suffer because if you really think about it the reality is this the reality is that had him and his team not come up with the ingenious plan and had Tyson Fury not had the stones to at least fight him one time, then Wilder would have been like they expected. He would have been in a bad position because he didn't get Joshua and he would have had to fight, you know, Brazil. But what really helped his career is two very good, exciting fights in one year that got people talking even more. You know, that Tyson Fury shit went viral. People, oh shit, the dude popped up. He was badly hurt and they're like people were making videos with the the clock the, the shot clock and timer to see if it was 10 seconds or jack reese that blew him up but that was a little bit of um innovation just like the slaves used to do they used to have the the racist whites at the plantation you know massa and they knew the slaves had to eat that you know they're working working with agriculture and crops and they're working in 100 degree heat and stuff in the south so they have to be able to drink and eat but they're not going to go out of their way to make sure you're eating the best food or anything like that so what they used to do to the slaves is the parts of the pig or the parts of food that were considered scraps and leftovers just extra from the meals that they were eating they would just give it to the slaves like you eat the you know, the intestines, you eat the pig's feet, the chi the chitlins, because those were considered like the, the parts that they wanted to discard because they're not going to go out of their way to appease and make slaves happy. But at the same time, you don't want a bunch of dead slaves, you know what I'm saying, who can't work because they have no energy or, you know, they're dehydrated, they don't have no food or, or water. It's just, a, you know, a part. So the slaves flipped it on them. They started taking them scraps and the little bit of ingredients they were given and making delicatessens. They started making delicious foods with it, you know, like they start seasoning, making ham hocks and, you know, those different meals or soups and stuff. And then put the pig feet in it or whatever the case may be, ham hocks. And they were making delicious foods, but they did that and emerged from scraps. It's kind of like Tupac's poetry book. The rose that grew from concrete. The rose that grew from concrete. It says, you wouldn't sweat a rose that grew from concrete and be like, oh, look, look at his leaves. Look at his petals. They've, they've been damaged. You would just admire the tenacity and the durability that it took for the rose to come from out of the concrete, the jungle, you know, this harsh environment where it wasn't supposed to be able to grow. That's the situation that they put Deontay Wilder in. It was up to him and his team to figure something out because the game plan was to have Wilder crawl back. You even heard it from Team Joshua. They were saying stuff like, oh, good luck fighting Brazil. Eddie Hearn said that. Go watch it. The videos are still up. You can find the video. He was like, enjoy fighting Brazil. And guess what? Based on fighting Fury first and going viral with that, by the time he fought Brazil, that was a big deal. He just did 10 million on CBS's his retweet of the Brazil knockout. But before Eddie Hearn was saying it to slight Deontay Wilder, he was saying it as an insult. Like, you know, he, he literally there's an IFL video where Eddie Hearn's laughing and, you know, jovial. And he says, oh, yeah, Anthony Joshua, we're fighting Povetkin and Hey, AJ, his stock is going to go ooh, and Wilder is going to have to fight Brazil because this was before it was known about the Tyson Fury Wilder. He's like, AJ, his stock is going to through the roof rocket. And then Deontay Wilder, he's going to be right here and his stock is going to go. And Joshua and this is Wilder. And he was making a game. And then now when karma's coming back, all of a sudden, you know, people, oh, why is he doing this? Well, it's the best versus the best. No, 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 no. 
In the words of Tupac, niggas love to scream peace after they start some shit. They started this. They left this man to dry. They thought he had no options but to take lowballed money. And now they should have when he was willing to fight for 15 million. That's never coming back. He's never going to sign for 15 million. They thought he was going to have to come begging and crawling. And like the rose that grew from concrete, him and his team were playing chess and they found another way. So what Eddie Hearn and Team Joshua were doing to think they were like, you know, the ones in charge wearing the pants in the relationship, you know, they lost that power and they lost it quick. And what they considered to be an insult, like, oh, <laughs> good luck fighting Brazil. He fought Brazil, but he did it his way, you know, took care of his mandatory after becoming, you know, even more famous for the Tyson Fury fight that everyone was talking about. They didn't see that coming. And even in that, I mean, we this goes deep. Tyson Fury, the, Eddie Hearn was hating on that, saying the fight wasn't going to happen. And, you know, Tyson Fury is going to pull out and it wasn't going to do no numbers. And then people are mad that the politics are happening. This is why Wilder has his own plan. Because he was forced to be his own man. He was forced to fend for himself, just like the slaves when they were given scraps. So when the slaves come out with bomb ass meals using the scraps that they were given, then don't feel no type of way. Don't be like, oh, what, what are you doing? Oh, can I have some? You know, when you didn't you didn't want to see them shine and they just made something out of nothing. This is what Deontay Wilder and his team did. They're like, damn, you know. He said, I'm a bet on myself. They offered him $100 million to sign with DAZN, $100 million for three fights. He's like, ah, I like to offer thanks for your time, but you know, we're going to do things our way. We're going to switch up because I'm a bet on myself. And people said he was stupid for all these things. They said, oh, it makes no sense. Why would he? How could he? You know? And now he's blowing up without DAZN. He hasn't had one fight on DAZN. If anything, he would have helped DAZN. Because after the Brazil fight, it went viral. So that would have been one of the included fights. So we quickly see. He said, look at his shirt. Number one heavyweight in the world. We quickly see who's the most exciting. See, and like the other, it goes deep, bro. Um, the Joshua Ruiz press conference. I skimmed through it. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even watch it. It was boring. Ruiz ain't much of a trash talker. Good fighter. Joshua's a good fighter. But there's no excitement. I was at the press, the, the kickoff press conference for Wilder versus Brazil. I was at the other one. So I got to see and it got it got hype, you know. So Wilder is also a much better showman, much better showman. So now he's doing his own thing. And now people are crying for the best versus the best. But all of 2018 and before when Wilder was pushing and smoking out Joshua like he did, you know, these people were nowhere. So now you sit and suffer. It's our time now. New media. So that's just to to recap. I, I'm not mad at Wilder Ortiz. The first fight was fun. The first fight was good. He thinks he could clean it up. He was sick the first fight. He got hurt. He hurt Ortiz. And he didn't, He like he said, he didn't think that he was going to get Tyson Fury fled. So we already know Tyson Fury don't want to smoke because Tyson Fury's team has said in multiple interviews they're trying to build the fight bigger. They're trying to allow Tyson Fury to recover give him why does he need three fights to to build up hype and then why would it be so on the level of tom schwartz that ain't fought outside of germany wilder is the realest champion in the business like he's been saying and his team has been keeping it the most real when it comes to this shit and that's why he's reaping the benefits from this it's that simple it's that simple all these other games you know joshua eddie hearn they thought they thought they could just make wilder beg for for the fight and lowball him and play games and force him to sign the disown and he's like nah we doing things our way and then now they're being the ones that's what he just he literally said he's saying the same thing as me and we all see it new media we all see it boxy ego eagles army we all see it the only people that don't see it are the people that refuse to see it you know he said now it's fun watching them beg you know wilder was smoking joshua out joshua ain't never he was barely responding he didn't even say nothing he was like, oh, yeah. And they're like, hey, what do you think of Wilder Fury? Oh, yeah. You know, he, he had nothing to say. Now he can't keep Wilder's name out of his mouth. Funny how that works. Just Wilder said the same. That, look at what I'm saying and look at new media. Look at what I bring up. Look what we say. And then Wilder's saying the same thing. 
It's ironic, isn't it? It's so funny. Wilder said it. I just fought Dominic Brazil May 18th. Where was Joshua? He wanted he he wanted to fight me so bad and press for it, but he don't want to lend his celebrity to my event. Why would I go to his fight? Especially a late replacement fight with a guy with the five week camp, you know. And I already got my own opponent lined up. Nope. I don't blame him one bit. Two way street, new media. We only dealing with two way streets. Why the fuck would Wilder go to Ruiz? Coming off of the knockout, you know, one of the knockouts of the year, if not the knockout of the year, Brazil performance, and have people in the crowd, oh, bomb squad, bomb squad, and can't wait to see some kind of potential interaction or com- confrontation between him and Joshua, but Joshua's not willing to do that for him. It's bomb squad's time right now. That's just what it is. Y'all could get mad and cry, but that's why the fight's not happening. Boom, new media. If you're new, consider subscribing. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.